The Xbox Series X will have backward compatibility with thousands of games at launch. Yeah, Microsoft's next-gen console will also have backwards compatibility uh, with, you know, quote-unquote, as they said, thousands of games at launch. And the company announced this today, trying to, quote-unquote, preserve and respect gaming legacies. The Xbox Series X will be most compatible, will be the most compatible console from the company. The number of compatible older games will more than double from the previous console. More than 500 Xbox 360 games could run on Xbox One. And Jason Ronald, the director of program management for Xbox Series X, explained how making backwards compatibility requires technological, uh, uh, technical innovations and a lot of work. The playtest team has completed 100,000 hours of testing, with thousands of games already being playable on Xbox Series X, from the biggest blockbusters to cult classics and fan favorites. Maintaining compatibility presents a massive technical challenge as fundamental system and chip ec- chip architectures advance across generations, Ronald said. The older games should also play better on the new console. Backwards compatible games run natively on the Xbox Series X hardware, running with the full power of the CPU, GPU, and SSD. Players won't need to use boost mode or downclocking. This means that all titles run at the best performance that they were originally designed for. They should perform better than what fans saw on the original launch platform with more steady frame rates and rendering at their maximum resolution and visual quality. There aren't any confirmed titles coming back from the Xbox One yet, but more information will be released with the Xbox Series X launch this holiday season. And Xbox also mentioned in a recent blog post that they are open to community for backwards compatible games. And in the post, they went on to say, Quote, the team also continues to listen to feedback from the community on additional titles you would like to see added to the compatibility program. Resurrecting titles from history often presents a complex mix of technical and licensing challenges, but the team is committed to doing everything we can to continue to preserve our collective gaming legacy. And many, back compat is the current industry term for the phrase backwards compatibility, which you no longer have to type again if you don't want to. And the <laughs> one thing to take away from that is just it's it's this push right now from the gaming industry to say our next gen consoles will be able to play a lot of the previous titles that you've gotten you know to experience. Thousands of titles, and I am personally impressed that some of these games will run even better on next gen consoles because they're not just making. Um, like a replica of the older, like Xbox is like an emulator to run these games. They're actually running them better on these next gen consoles. Right. And that is a great feature. I think that's something that for people who are like, oh, I want to be able to play the games from my PS4 or my, my Xbox One X and, and I'll play them when I, you know, am on the next gen console. You know, how important actually is it is an interesting question because I wonder if there's an actual database of any time they've made a title backwards compatible with a current gen system, that how many hours do people actually go back and put into that game when they've jumped to the next gen? I feel like it's really not that large. There's not a big audience that plays these games, but I think it is a very diehard audience that does, that wants to be able to play the entirety of their gaming collection Um, This is just reminding me of those photos I see where there are bookshelves and shelves of just cases and cases of games. And I think this is mainly for those people who have a big collection. I personally don't think I've ever used a backwards compatibility feature. I think I like the option of playing my older titles, but I don't need to, and I don't do that, and I don't really know anyone who does. What about you? Yeah, uh, I get what KitKat's saying there too about people who lose their library from uh, previous games. And I think that that's a valid point. You're like, hey, I bought these, I own these, they should be mine, they should carry over. I, right. I totally, totally agree. The The only thing to me that just kind of like seems odd is I always know this is like a narrative push. It was the push in the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox uh, 360, PlayStation 3. Like this has always been a conversation that you can play the previous titles um, that you once owned. but even for me right now, as I think about it, to your point that you just made, unless it's like a remaster or, you know, a re-envisioning of the, the, the game, I don't find myself jumping into previous gen titles like that. I just, me personally. And right. I never feel like I see that frequency on my, my friends lists as well. 
I agree with Maddie that I think it's a comfort thing for a lot of people. I feel like if you take away someone's ability to play an old game, it really pulls at their heartstrings. Um, and, and the nostalgia factor is definitely there. And I think just the option that they could play that game is just kind of like a nice peace of mind that people are willing to pay for and are willing to demand because it seems like if you don't have backwards comp compatibility, I should have just said back compat there, um, it causes a huge uproar for people. Maddie wants to play Crips and Skies. Yeah. And Kit Kat says to play a lot of like the old games. And for some people, they're like, hey, I just, you know, spent what I spent on next gen console. I got to wait to get the next gen games. I'd like to be able to play the previous ones. It's mm -hmm. very, it's, it's valid. I just, I always find this funny. What's up, Savage? That these two entities specifically, this always happens. They make this announcement right around each other and they kind of seem to, to, to point it out as if it's like a reason why you should entertain the one over the other. Or it's like, look at the features that we offer. You know, it, it's, it's just a really interesting business approach because do we actually think anyone has the competitive edge when it comes to backwards compatibility, Sony or Microsoft? I guess the slight difference is that with the PlayStation 5, it looks like you're going to need an update to be able to have backwards compatibility, but I don't think that's too much of a burden for anyone. It seems like both systems are really taking this seriously with having thousands of um, thousands of games able to play. I believe it is with the PlayStation 5. I'm not sure which console it was. Maybe you remember. But they're also um, adding the pause and play feature to yeah. backwards compatible games, which I think is really cool. So what that is, for anyone who doesn't know, is you can kind of have it running in the background. And let's say you want to put Tomb Raider on pause while you play some Uncharted, and then you want to go back to Tomb Raider. You can just pick up right where you left off versus closing out the game and reloading it back up which shouldn't take that long in general with these next-gen consoles, but it's still yeah. a really nice feature. I believe this was a feature with the Xbox Series X that they were talking about. Uh, so, you know, for individuals who are waiting for a game to load, you can swap over to another one and, and move back and forth. I think these hard drives and the 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 SSD technology is going to be very impressive. I think the, the the more we start to behave with this new technology, we'll, we'll start to get into that place of, like, what we expect from here on out. So, you know, the idea of getting very used to your PlayStation or your Xbox Series X launching very fast, um, you know, you, it'll probably be frustrating to ever play on a PlayStation 4 or previous gen console again. It will. I think I've mentioned this before, but even with my Switch, it's always on sleep mode and I usually have a game still loaded. So I just put it back, I just wake it back up from sleep mode and then I'm right there right. in Animal Crossing and I don't have to actually start it up because it does take kind of a while to load, maybe another minute or so to boot up and I don't have to deal with that anymore. And it really is a game changer. And when I load up things on my PC now, even I'm like, oh, this is kind of taking a long time. Yeah. And it would, would you not buy a console if it didn't have it? It wouldn't. I don't think it's a determining, it's not a deal breaker for right. me. You mean the load times or backwards compatibility? Backwards, backwards compatibility. Oh. They were like, no, we're just focused on everything here on out. I think I would I would still buy it, but it wouldn't be as impressive to me. Mm, I got you. I guess it wouldn't have that like longevity that I feel like consoles are having Stop it, Maddie. more of. It is not back compat. Get that, you get that lower third down. Back compat. Get that lower third out of here. Back combat, I literally had to look it up because I was so confused. Yeah, I was like, what is this? What is back combat? What is that? So our next topic of today is that there is a new Star Wars VR game on the way. It's really interesting because it wasn't that long ago that we saw the, um, uh, uh, the Vader Immortal series pop up for the Oculus Quest. So might this actually be the announcement to convince non-VR gamers into buying a VR headset? It's possible as the new Star Wars VR experience has been announced and so far it sounds pretty promising. Created by Lucasfilm Studio ILM Lab, responsible for other VR titles such as Vader Immortal, Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge is a new action adventure title arriving later this year. It's being made in collaboration with Oculus Studios, but there are currently no further details on platforms. The story is set sometime between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, and will let players live their own adventure while encountering, quote, both new and iconic characters from the Star Wars galaxy, with multiple styles of gameplay and difficulty settings to accommodate a wide variety of players. 
And Disney seems to be encouraging the integration between the Galaxy's Edge theme park area and Star Wars games. It's possible to build your theme park lightsaber in Fallen Order, and as the name suggests, this VR title is no exception. The game takes place in the outskirts of the Black Spire outpost seen in Galaxy's Edge on Planet Batu, described as an old trading stop at the edge of the Outer Rim. That was once a busy crossroads along the old sub-lightspeed trade routes. It's also a haven for those trying to avoid the First Order, such as rogues and smugglers. Pretty similar vibes to Tatooine, but with less sand. ILM Lab hopes this title will go beyond one-way communication in the form of storytelling to story living, where you're inside a world making consequential choices that drive your experience forwards. We're not sure about that moniker, but full VR immersion in the Star Wars universe sounds incredible, so long as it's not the inside of a Starlock pit. Absolutely. I don't want to be inside that thing. No, don't want to be in one either. So what do we think about this new experience? I think with what they kind of showed off in a very short experience of uh, Vader Immortal, I think this is ripe for the storytelling, the experience, um, the the technology, especially within virtual reality, is, is getting even greater. There was a recent update for Half-Life Alex where they've added liquid to bottles. So Whoa. now you can actually shake around the bottles and see the liquid moving around inside That's of it based cool. on however much, you know, is is inside of there i mean these kind of updates that are steadily rolling out i think with what disney has and resources i'm very excited about this what about you i'm really excited too i played i think only the first episode of vader immortal but everyone who i show my quest to i'm like you have to play vader immortal just do it even if it's 10 minutes just play the game it's super fun it's super cool i really like this idea that they're also tying this into galaxy's edge I feel like it appeals to people who have been there and want an extension of that. You know, if you're going to go into a game and be like, I saw that building, I was right there in real life. And I think it also appeals to people who haven't been to Galaxy's Edge, also known as Star Wars Land, um, so they can get kind of a, a, a taste of what it's like. Because it's really cool if you haven't been. I was worried it that is. Galaxy's Edge was actually going to be like kind of small because a lot of Disney things maybe aren't, you know, that grandiose, but it's big. It's definitely made for adults. <laughs> Yeah, and the new experience that they had, you know, the 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 one I don't know if you got to experience it, but you like move through the the um, the first order ship, and there's just a moment where you're with the rebellion, and then you're around the first order. Just everything, the scale, you know, walking on one of those like star destroyer ships. There's just that moment that that happens. Yeah, when you're saying like now people can have that experience and don't necessarily have to travel to uh anaheim california or orlando or uh anywhere else to go and experience that that you can now just get a headset and, and jump in um and the fact that they're talking about things which are your decisions push the story forward that has mm -hmm. high replayability and if it fits different play styles it's like okay so i can uh put on a headset and play as a smuggler and maybe put on a headset and play more as like a soldier they're just like all these different things that i think they're going to be able to uh, to implement that sound great, and I, I hope the execution is there, too. Kamikaze says, wait, Anaheim is real? Yes, it's right next to Tatooine. If you, if, you see, if you see one, you'll be really close to seeing the other. I agree with the consequential choices, adds a lot of replayability, and I think the term story living versus storytelling is a little dorky, but yep. I like the concept. Maybe this term will catch on, but it's, it really shows that you're not just there experiencing the story happen to you. It's you are a part of it and you are making decisions and you are walking around this world, um, yeah. I think is a nice step forwards. And maybe we'll see even more integration with Galaxy's Edge. I feel like I'm picturing something like in Harry Potter world when you have wands that interact with the environment maybe they'll add some sort of ar aspect in the future i know i mean you you know as well if you've been to galaxy's edge it's very interactive yes so there are even mini games while you're waiting in line yes. you can scan crates and you have to do missions on your phone while you're yep. waiting in line to kills you know, your battery kills, Heads up. Heads kills your up. battery while you're waiting in the hot sun yep. but you have to like decipher things and you have to like read the symbols and actually really interact with the environment yeah, and I was also seeing something earlier today, which was just kind of this opinion piece saying AAA studios need to start taking risks on VR games. Now's the time to do it. 
And I think there's validity to that. And I think there's something to be said about seeing some of these bigger studios like, you know, see, seeing Disney get behind uh, uh, LucasArts Gaming and, and to push for more of this kind of content. Maybe we'll start to see some of our other favorite, you know, uh, uh, developers decide to start testing the waters in, in virtual reality. You know, Kaiza, for you, mm-hmm. as someone who's more of just kind of like a, you're a general fan of Star Wars or, you know, your yes. awareness is there. You appreciate its existence in, in pop culture and for what it is. Like, what would be your dream Star Wars VR experience? I think I'd want something like a Mandalorian experience. And now I'm just kind of thinking like Star Wars Red Dead Redemption. I forgot what the map <laughs> called that the Mandalorian gets on. But I feel like... Oh, I'd, yeah. Yeah, I'd want something with like a From map. The, uh, it, I have spoken. That guy? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. guy. Um, I definitely want something with a mount and have like bounty hunting missions, I think. is Yeah. That. What about you? That'd be really cool. I think there there could be something really cool with a lot of these like sword simulators that are there. Yeah. I think there could be something really cool with like an actual, you're a new Jedi coming up and coming through and you mm-hmm. go through like the full on training you go and you get, right. you know, you scale and find your own, you know, Kyber crystal, get the opportunity to choose whether or not you want to dominate the crystal, move into the Sith or, you know, move along with whichever uh, crystal you end up finding. I think that would be r- really cool if they if they could play into something uh, of that kind of journey uh, where you're having like these like epic lightsaber battles in VR. That would be really cool. I really liked the the battles that were in Vader Immortal. Yeah. I was worried they that they would be what were short. You know? What what? They just felt kind of short. Oh, they they did feel short, and I feel like yeah, just as I was starting to get the hang of it, there's like a training session where so these like laser laser bullets come at you, and you hit them with the lightsaber to defend yourself. Yeah. I felt like right when I was getting the hang of it, it was like okay, on to the next part of the story, yeah. and I'm like, wait, I was just getting good at this. Yeah, that's why I was like the full fledged experience for me would be be really really cool. Same, and this battle too. Oh yeah, this game is so good. It is. Yeah, it really is. I just, uh, yeah, there, I, and you know, there's just a, there's just something to be said about this kind of experience that if you get to go through it, uh, in, in a different level, like if you could do the jumping from ledge to ledge kind of thing, you know, those force jumps that happen would be really fun. Kind of like if you could do the Obi-Wan Darth Maul fight, uh, in VR where you're moving through that whole last sequence, that, well, that That would be be just amazing. Yeah. What's up, Stitch? more things with um there there was a part in vader immortal where you're walking right on the ledge and it's really scary because if you like walk at the wrong spot you'll fall over and you're just standing in your living room and you're yeah. totally fine and safe I'm gonna but die. It, yeah but it really does feel scary and i hope that in this next game we're going to see more of being in really perilous situations without actually having to yeah. be on a roller coaster or anything yeah couldn't <laughs> agree more let's see what happens when they show the gameplay of this game I'm excited. I hope it actually, you know, executes. But moving on, our next story is Fortnite Chapter 2 has delayed Season 3 until June 11th. Fortnite's Chapter 2 Season 3 has been delayed by a week to give Epic Games more time to prepare for the new season, the developer announced today. Season 3 will now go live on June 11th. So Fortnite players will have another week to finish their Battle Pass challenges and confirm their appearance choices for various characters such as Brutus, Tiantina, Meowsels, and Maya. The delay also gives players more time to finish the recently added Storm the Agency Challenge. I just realized how ridiculous some of those names are. Oh on yeah, completely. <laughs> yeah, and I felt like I said them with ease, but I was just like, these are weird names, except like, Brutus. I'm, I'm Brutus and Maya. <laughs> Epic also announced the one-time only live event called The Device, which is now scheduled for Saturday, June 6th. Epic stressed that space is limited for the live event, so interested players should show up 30 minutes early to secure their spot. And this isn't the first time that a Fortnite season has been delayed. Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2 was delayed by two weeks in January because of a switch to a new physics engine. And the latest delay gives players more time to finish up challenges and new live events to look forward to. 
I am personally really excited for this because I am level 44 in the Battle Pass as of today. Good number. I, I have to get all the way to 100. I played a little bit today and finished number two. I totally wow. could have won. Um, I'm looking forward to this next event. I'm impressed that they're still adding more challenges. Right now, they're yeah. just new Storm the Agency thing, as we discussed, where um, you're, you're really going to the agency and you're infiltrating it and you have to also, you have to swim over these underwater hatches and you'll come across other people who are also just doing that challenge. So it's kind of like, I'm not going to shoot you. Like this is a peace treaty. We're just both right. going to do this swimming challenge. Don't shoot me. <laughs> Which this I is think already is hard enough. Right. It's hard, it's hard enough yeah. to do this already. Thanks yeah. Coombs. Um, but I am a little suspicious that this isn't just delayed because the developers need another week to work on the new season. Yeah, I'm right there with you because if you're not playing Fortnite, but you're playing the other talk of the town Call of Duty Warzone, you know season four launches next week. And it's a really interesting thing because I kind of was actually interested to see what that was going to be like, that both of their seasons happen on the same week like who gets more players i was genuinely curious of this this outcome and then it's kind of like fortnite's like oh we'll wait a week yeah i i feel like fortnite definitely backed off i think warzone and fortnite both having their new season on the same day would not do well for both i feel like both companies want to have their full fanfare and full day all over twitter where they're the hot news of the day their new season is a thing that everyone's talking about is the talk of the town so I, I think there's another thing that's announced. Oh, the PS5 event is also supposed to be June, next week as June well, 3rd. too. Yeah, so, and more sources coming out saying June 3rd's the day. I hope those sources are correct. We <laughs> haven't heard yet to confirm from, from Sony on this, but yeah, that would also be happening next week as well. <laughs> that's a lot of stuff. And yeah, I, I'm, I think it was the best decision for Fortnite to push the new season a week, not just for me, not just for my selfish reason, reasons, but also because they have an event, they're still adding a lot of new content to the game. I've noticed they've been adding a lot of alternate skin looks, so if you already own a skin, it'll be like, hey, there's new styles that you didn't have to pay for that you just have now, which is also cool. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of content in Fortnite. I don't think people are particularly bored with it right now, and I haven't seen it much pu negative public sentiment if at all about people being mad that the season was delayed a week yeah that's an interesting comment there from from kit kat saying you know i wish we had more game variety instead of different flavors of shooters because i understand that i think that was part of the big draw for me of playing rocket league for as long as i did was it wasn't a shooter and it was this different type of experience and there was a you know a large portion of the community but i even found myself getting back into shooters so now i'm basically playing warzone all the time and rarely touching Rocket League. And it's just kind of like, it's this odd shift because I get what that's what Kit Kat's saying. And, and it's like, yeah, what is there something else out there? I don't really think <laughs> there is. We've kind of like founded e ourselves upon these, you know, sort of like shooter experiences or, or MOBA type experiences, but which still have aspects of shooting experience. I feel that as well. I feel like I strayed away. I stayed away from shooters for a while because I was like, oh, like every shooter is kind of the same. It seems kind of yeah. boring. It's different, you know, iterations of the same thing. I, there, there's a lot of games out there that I guess they just don't really have as much hype. Like I know some people who are still die hard playing World of Warcraft, farming the Black Lotus, is it? I don't know. They were, they were telling me all about the, all about their methods, but you're the, like, yeah, games are always shooters. Yeah, it's true. And that's so, you know, I, I don't know what that, what there is to be said about that. Maybe it's a limitation of current hardware and that this new technology, because more information will be, you know, on these games as we get access to the next gen consoles, maybe we'll start to see innovation happen. But I will say, if we look at the players that are on Fortnite still and the players that are constantly on Warzone, I mean, you have a lot of people excited next week and the week after. I mean, this is a this is really turning into like a jam packed summertime. Uh, that that I, I think gamers are just kind of like, yay! I'm thankful for all these distractions. Right, it's it's good timing, and I think that's when Valorant also officially launches is June second. Yeah, that's a big that's a big slew of days. That's yeah, a lot it happening. Is. There, there is a lot going on. You have the free games that are happening as well, too. I mean, there's just, there's so much to be said for for what's happening in the gaming industry right now. And, and to see a big 
company like Epic, you know, shift one week back where most of the community is used to these delays, um, you know, maybe there is a little bit of like, hey, we don't want to lose traffic because Valorant is also coming out that week if the announcement with the PlayStation does happen. So your point to that is something I'm I'm hearing over my head again, that it's probably the case there that they were like, let's just delay it one week and dodge the possible loss of, uh, of, of player influx. Right. They're like, let's take this very, very minor L um, because they do have the device <laughs> on, on June 6th, which I don't really know what it is. Some people have speculated that there's a device on Midas, who's the Battle Pass Tier 100 skin. There's like a device on his desk. And also I thought the countdown was a countdown to the end of the season, but I guess that's yeah. for the device event. So I think yeah. it's going to be a big deal. Um, yeah. Also, as we talked about, we talked about yesterday that it was leaked that Battlefront 2 would be on PS Plus. And that's and that was confirmed. confirmed. Yeah. Um, so a lot of games, a lot of free games or games that come free with a subscription um, as we said, the PS5 event, Warzone new season, Fortnite yeah. new season, Valorant launch, a yeah. lot of stuff is coming up. And the, the, the most recent rumor I read about with the next week Warzone is get ready to ne need more hard drive space, which I thought no! was really interesting because uh, we were talking no! like, well, what's this update? Is this possibly going to be like the new map? Are we moving into a new place like Donsk or whatever it was called? Right. But I'm, I'm really... I'm Urzik Stan. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious what's happening next week with that because I will say if that is the change, if next week is map change for, for Warzone, I think there's going to be a lot of interest in, in that title for, for longer than just a week. If you're, if you're downloading that update, make sure to kick everyone in your house off your internet because you're going to need all the bandwidth. Maddie says, I had to delete Modern Warfare from my PS4. Yeah, I thought it was funny. Somebody posted the, uh, you know, the captain, um, the movie with with Tom Hanks where he's the Captain Phillips oh, or Captain, like, yeah, I think it's Captain he's Phillips. Captain Command. And, and the guy's like, I'm the captain now. And they used that meme and they were like, uh, it's, it was Modern Warfare over his face and it said, I'm the hard drive now. And that oh, made no. me laugh so hard because I was just like, yep, it that's yeah. exactly right. Like Maddie's like, I got to yeah. delete this game from my hard drive because I'm the hard drive now. <laughs> the whole thing at this point oh my goodness but we are wrapping up our news show we have a lot of time left because we have a lot of gameplay to show you yes we are going to show the last of us part two's playstation state of play very much like we did last week with ghost of tsushima uh, a game that i think we're all just ready to be out and in our hands so we're going to jump through this the same way let's take a look buckle up This is our first in-depth look at a highly anticipated Peggy game 18. that is actually coming out in a few weeks. I know you wish things were different. Guitars. I wish things were different. Ellie! But they ain't. Please stop. I'm leaving tomorrow. To do this smart. We'd be leaving Jackson vulnerable. So they just get to get away with this? How'd you find us? You can't stop this. I want what you want. But not at any cost. Some little bit of 
bit of both, maybe. Zombie survival. If you haven't played the first game. It's we could have killed. At least worth you. watching an entire play. Maybe you should have. So this was the trailer that came out like last week, two weeks ago. I'm Neil Druckmann. Vice President of Naughty Dog and the director of The Last of Us Part Two. We're just a few weeks away from launch on June and 19th on the TV show. when the game will finally be in your hands. The wait has been long and we're extremely grateful for your patience, especially now in the midst of these unprecedented and challenging times. We hope you're all taking care of yourselves and that you, your friends, and your loved ones are doing well. Because of these extraordinary circumstances, we can't be together in this final stretch and share the experience like we usually would. So today we're trying something different. Something we've never done before. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to give you an in-depth look into what awaits you in The Last of Us Part Two, including new details about the gameplay experience and story. And to cap it all off, we'll be showing a never before seen lengthy gameplay sequence. You'll definitely want to stick around for that. He looks so intense oh, already. Yeah. I was supposed to take her to the fireflies and walk away. They were actually going to make a cure. The only catch. It would kill her. The Last of Us Part Two picks up Ellie and Joel's story several years after the events of the first game. Ellie and Joel have settled in Jackson, Wyoming, amongst a thriving community of survivors. With the threats of the world kept outside the town's walls, Jackson has been able to find relative peace and even stability. Ellie is now 19, lives on her own, and has been able to forge lasting relationships within the community. Scale of one to 10. How would you rate our kiss from last night? Spicy. However, this peace is short-lived. Jackson and Ellie suffer a violent and traumatizing event. Ellie sets off back into the treacherous outside world in search of retribution and justice. Your comments in her chat. Her journey will take her to new parts of the country previously unexplored in The Last of Us. The story spans multiple seasons and climates, from the snow-capped mountains of Jackson to the Ellie lush Pacific is, Northwest. Yeah. Each introduces a wide range of exterior and interior environments for you to navigate and explore, rendered That's in cool. meticulous detail and yep. unprecedented scale with the latest iteration of the Naughty Dog engine. Oh, wow. Our goal wow. is to make these environments not only beautiful, but feel as grounded and authentic to the cities they're based on as possible. Much of the story unfolds in what remains of Seattle, a massive former quarantine zone. Its locales are incredibly diverse, spanning a dense city center with a skyline of towering high-rises to the beautiful suburbs and stormy waterfronts that surround it. Yeah, the city exhibits drastic shifts in architecture, elevation, and weather. And with part two, we've introduced new traversal mechanics that afford greater exploration and hey. ways to navigate threats. Finally. Ellie is not only yeah. able to climb and jump over gaps, but she can use ropes to scale vertical terrain or swing over obstacles, allowing you to discover new areas, resources, Very cool. and side narratives. That's cool. That is cool. These more open environments also create new strategic considerations in combat, whether it's to get the jump on enemies or bypass them entirely. What's up, Ariana? What's that? The Last of Us yeah, Part 2 is some of the largest environments we've ever created. I like Horseback the horse. riding will allow Ellie to quickly cover some of these expansive terrains. Some streets are so flooded that a boat is required to navigate them. Yes! Ooh. However, Boats. the world of The Last of Us is as lush and inviting as it is deadly. As Ellie uncovers the path to finding those who have wronged her, she must face the many threats of this unknown city. In the wake of the pandemic and the fall of the quarantine zone, Seattle has become a war zone where two warring factions find themselves in an ongoing conflict for territory and resources. 
One of these groups is the Washington Liberation Front, otherwise known as the WLF. The WLF are a militia group that began as resistance to the military occupation of Seattle and eventually wrestled control of the city from them. They are highly trained, organized, and well-equipped with weapons they stole from the army. They occupy much of the city, imprisoning or killing trespassers on site. Hey, we got Sneak into the grass. Did you see her? They showed that workbench a couple times. On the other side of this bloody conflict is a group of religious zealots called the Seraphites, or Scars, defined by the self-inflicted deep cuts that they bear across their faces. Like the WLF, they're deeply tribalistic and territorial. They're known for being stealthy, using overgrowth as cover, and they use more silent weapons like bows and arrows. Clip her wings. <laughs> Oh yeah, this was like one of the first ones I showed. But beyond this conflict among survivors, Darling. the threat that originally brought the world to its knees is very much present. Every human is in danger of falling victim to the infected. Well, okay. Whoa, oh, that's so gross. There are the recently infected runners who are more numerous and aggressive in this game. The blind but extremely oh, the clickers, clickers. Oh my God. and the stalkers who sneak and hide until they're ready to attack, surprising their victims with extreme agility and brutal violence. The Last of Us Part Two this introduces fight. new stages of infected, such as the Shamblers, large, heavily armored enemies that are covered in pustules. Upon getting Ew. close to you, they expel a corrosive spore cloud that burns its victims. But our most terrifying and lethal new forms of infected will have to wait until you play the game for yourselves. Overcoming these threats will require careful consideration of how you approach every combat encounter and how you leverage Ellie's unique skills, equipment, and then environment. Oh uh, man, dogs! The WLF Run. patrol the streets of Seattle with guard dogs, which are capable of detecting and following you, even while in cover. You think this guy's connected to the they can pick up your scent and alert their handlers to your presence. Oh, that's tough. Listen mode will yeah. reveal your scent trail, so keep moving fight. and cause distractions to avoid detection. They could be hiding anywhere. 25 years they after the pandemic quick. began, the world is completely overgrown. Use tall grass to hide from enemies and go prone to stay out of sight. However, this form of analog stealth means you're never fully hidden. If enemies get close enough, they can discover you, even in grass. When Ellie is overwhelmed, running away is a viable option. You can also break class or crawl through tight spaces nice. to find new paths or areas to evade or take on your enemies. Ooh, get in that any brick. given combat situation, you can flee an encounter brick, and re-establish stealth to regain the advantage. If you absolutely have to fight your way out, there are a variety of tools at your disposal. Ellie's more agile than most of her enemies. She can sprint and quickly dodge incoming Brutal. attacks. Learning how opponents attack with different weapons and mastering the timing of your dodges will prevent you from taking damage and wow. create oh. opportunities to counterattack. You can use savage. items or well-placed shots to stun enemies nice. before dealing a killing blow. Get out of everywhere! Or they using are. them as a shield to protect yourself or buy some time to figure out your next move. Whoa! She is. She is brutal. someone you're not going to mess with. Allies will take part in helping you navigate the environments, spot enemies, and meaningfully help you in combat encounters. Oh, nice. Back off! They were like, you can't avoid action. <laughs> All we're seeing is just non-avoidance. No, yeah, you can't do it. Between the human survivors and the roaming infected, there will be times where multiple threats are present, creating new strategic considerations and opportunities. You can choose whether to attack these opponents separately and directly, or find ways to pit them against each other. Ooh. Flee as they fight, or wait until their numbers have thinned out and engage with whomever's left. Damn it. 
voice acting's so good. Yeah. These screams are like stressing me out. Yeah. Audio mixing's always been so good, dude. Our goal is to create unparalleled attention, coupled with deep systems that give you greater control and influence <laughs> over your dreams. Fast Furious. As you play, and you'll be able to invest in a broad collection of crafting items, weapons, oh, yeah, and player nice. upgrades through crafting. training manuals scattered throughout the environment and scavenging for ingredients. These skills and upgrade manuals cater to a variety of play styles, and the choices you make will create your own distinct experience. Yeah. We also wanted to extend that agency and personalization to your weapons through our new workbench system. Even the animations are so cool. Scavenge for yeah. parts to modify and improve your weapon's performance and attributes, all of which are visualized and become part of your character. Very cool. Survival will also require using the parts and ingredients that you'll find in the environment, which can be crafted into a wide range of defensive and offensive items like proximity mines, explosive arrows, pistol suppressors, and more. Explosive arrows? OP? <laughs> Everyone's so sneaky in this game. All of these gameplay systems are meant to immerse you in the world and make you feel in lockstep with Ellie's emotional journey. Guitar. As we've said before, this, water. this is Naughty Dog's largest, most ambitious game. It may seem like we covered a lot, but we've only scratched the surface of what it's like to play The Last of Us Part Two. We can't wait for you to experience it all for yourself on June 19th. Right around the corner. Until then, here's an extended sequence of never before seen gameplay. Enjoy. I mean, this is current gen. Yeah, which is wild. Hey, hey, hey Kamikaze, she can swim. Hey! Ellie Phelps, am I right? I think you could still craft them. What the fuck are they talking about? I think that was something I saw in there. Oh, you can actually go underwater. Going Tomb Raider. <laughs> That's a cool environment. Guys, real quick, I just wanted to point out that this is the same price as Fast and Furious Crossroads of $60. What? The games are the same price. I just had to point that out. I'm sorry. That means same quality, right? You'd expect so. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Go. Oh, she's still wet, too. Look at the graphics. The bag is wet. Hands up. Is he? Is he? You know a girl named Nora? Sure, yeah. Where is she? In the hospital. Where in the hospital? Yeah, they're, they're clearing out the upper floors. She's somewhere in there. Yeah. Oh, it's a PS Vita. She you just that? Vita. <gasps> Whoa! And she's no longer ever going to play a PS Vita again. Take the Vita. Take it, Ellie. There it is! Oh! <laughs> Straight up a PS Vita. She is ruthless! Yeah. I like that the bag is wet too. I hate when you come yeah. out of the water in a video game and like, it's as if you never went in it. You got like that chemical they sell late at night. Call 1-800 number, it'll keep the water off. You. Got my girl waiting for the father. You shit me. They put you with your 
Hey, we get the job done. <laughs> Beat a port confirmed. I bet you do. Death counter one mini. If we're going over this whole trailer, death you. counter. <laughs> this trailer's already like fifteen. <laughs> sure, I'll keep that in mind. Oh, she just created a silencer. Fuck. Sounds like scars are getting closer. Hope that's our guys executing those freaks. Hey, did you hear about all getting called up to the Ooh. Nice. Isaac wants us to retake all of downtown. Oh, it's indicating how many shots you have left before the silencer goes away, too. Look at that. Not after what went down last nice. time. Even Isaac isn't that crazy. That's what I heard. Oh. Oh. Shut up. All right. Stealth kill. The sound. Oh, the crunchy. Again, why can't we just have a splitter cell come back? Oh. Came from that way. oh. No? Oh, it's just a stick. It looked like a machine. <laughs> oh, nice. It went right into the backpack. Like, it's actually on her person. That's cool. In the backpack. It. That's very cool. Ellie's just killing people. She's surviving. <laughs> Kill or be killed. Love the crunch. I hear you, Coom. Oh, are you gonna kill the dog? Ah. <laughs> uh, dogs and games. <sighs> That's rough. Yeah. Probably gonna be the biggest complaint. <laughs> I gotta kill dogs? Four out of ten, had to kill a dog. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, this is like Tomb Raider X Splinter Cell. Yeah, very much so. Oh, nice shot. Oh, did you hear the choke? A little bit. I got hit and he was like, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. oh yep, there's the silencer. has gone. Oh, nice. And she just took the mag out. The weapon stayed on the ground and the mag came out. That's, That's very cool. cool. The tiny detail. <gasps> Saw movement. I'll go check it out. I got you covered. Holy I don't shit. love death sounds, Kit Kat. I'm noticing them when they're happening. They're well done. <laughs> oh, right in the face. I like the explosions. An 18 plus game, right? Probably three to them. Oh, if I were to guess. <laughs> yeah, this is for sure a mature game. Hats oh. flying off too. There's blades on that stick. I found Whoa! Uh. <sighs> that person's not eating right anymore. Isn't this this is very much like Uncharted, where like headshots are key. I like that headshots are one shot. Oh. Interruption of, uh, of trying to get through the door. Oh, that's intense. Is this Shroud's gameplay? Do we have Shroud behind the M and K? Or behind the controller? This is PlayStation. Damn it! Find another way off! I don't want to get on her bad side. Right there with Shroud. Me, Blood on the camera. Ew. I like how the flashlight looks. Yeah. The light. It's impressive for it's not the new global illumination with the uh, PlayStation 5 they've been talking about. Their own lighting system looks next gen. Yeah, it does. Oh. Yeah. Sneaky. Down on top? No. Maybe if you put the guard, Abby will here. I'm not stupid. You're gonna tell us where she went. When Isaac talks to us about this, I'm getting tired of this. Nora. Nora. I'm not going. That's what she said she was looking for, right?
Yeah, I think so. Ooh, quiet. I was worried she was gonna fall through. Yeah. Then. The sound design is phenomenal. Grab it. No, get the duct tape. Don't scream. Put that shit down. You remember me? Guardians says, I'm going to pay the 65 or whatever they want for this game. Just take my money. Yeah, seriously. That that just is very impressive. and Incredibly impressive. If you haven't played the first one, play it before you play this one. And yeah, I, I think this is going to deliver. Definitely. There were so many environments, even in that short snippet of gameplay. We were swimming. We were going through vents. We were going through interiors and exteriors. We saw so many ways of how you could totally just destroy people. Yeah. There's Clearly, <laughs> Ellie is now a one man, one woman army. And is. that is quite prominent, as we saw in this 20 minutes. I like how she is um, very, I guess, like realistically athletic that we've seen throughout the whole thing. Like she could like swing across on a rope, you know, she can get up and down from a vent. She's not, she's no Lara Croft, but she's also not like totally useless or anything. I think it's cool that they added all this stuff to make her as capable as we believe her to be. Very much. It looks like they added some stuff from Uncharted in there as well. Very yeah. similar experiences. The first one in Uncharted, not too much other than the third person and some of the movement, but the addition of the rope crafting as well i mean yeah it's, they've they've done a they've done a, a some some good decisions it looks like on the surface i also like the variety of weapons there was the there's stealth kills with a knife there's the melee with the knives on a wooden stick there were bows yeah. and arrows pistols pistols with right a across silencer. the mouth. there's so many ways for you to defend yourself so what else is out there that is going to look brutal and be something you know that is as destructive as blades through a bat to the face right <laughs> I would not want to face that at all. Nope, nope, nope. But that does bring us to the end of our news hour as we have covered so many wonderful topics today within the gaming industry. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't signed up to join the conversation, it is super easy and you can click the star to get a notification for each time we go live. But don't go anywhere. Nope, because Zan's about to have his workout with Coach Mike. And then he's also going to be playing some Star Citizen. So look out for that. But for Kaiza and I, we will be back tomorrow. Have fun with Zan. For the Caffeine Channel News, I am Marone. I am Kaisa. Thank you so much and have a good one out there. We'll see you guys tomorrow.